the TTM Squeeze Indicator. The TTM Squeeze Indicator was created by John F. Carter. The goal of the indicator is to pinpoint when a contracting market is about to explode into a trending market. If you can catch the beginning of the trend, you can ride it for very large gains. So here's the deal. I've watched multiple videos on the TTM squeeze indicator, and in almost every single one of them, they're using the TTM squeeze all by itself. But according to John F. Carter, the man who created the indicator, he uses it in conjunction with the ADX indicator, which I've covered in a previous video, and the TTM wave. So we're gonna use all three for this video. Let's talk about how the TTM squeeze indicator works. The main component of the squeeze indicator are red and green dots along a zero line. Now these red and green dots are based on Bollinger Bands and Keltner channels. When a Bollinger Band travels within a Keltner channel, you are said to be in a squeeze. In a squeeze, the dots on the zero line turn red. Now when a Bollinger Band travels back outside the Keltner channel, the market has said to have fired, and the dots on the zero line will turn from red back into green. This is your signal to enter the trade. The second component of the TTM squeeze indicator is a histogram. In upward momentum, the bars will be above the zero line. Light blue bars indicate increasing momentum, and dark blue bars indicate decreasing momentum. In downward momentum, the bars will be below the zero line. Red bars indicate increasing momentum to the downside, and yellow bars indicate weakening momentum or decreasing momentum to the downside. To oversimplify things, when a red dot on the zero line turns to a green dot, and at the same time, when the bars on the histogram are above the zero line, you go long. In the reverse scenario, when a red dot on the zero line turns to green and the bars on the histogram are below the zero line, you go short. But if you recall, the ADX indicator and the TTM wave indicator are also used with this strategy and they're used for confirmation. Now I'm not going to go into great detail on these indicators, but what you need to know basically is that the ADX indicator is a volatility indicator. When it's near its low, that means that volatility has gone lower and therefore has the potential to expand back out into high volatility. The thinking is there, if you get in during low volatility, then once it expands into higher volatility, you have a chance to catch big moves. The TTM wave is simply another momentum indicator. When the bars are above the zero line, you're in upward momentum, and when the bars are below the zero line, you're in downward momentum. Simple enough. Okay, traders, we're gonna get right to it. Uh, my chart looks a little messy right now because I wanted to show you what I was talking about with the Keltner channels and the Bollinger Bands. So that's what all these spaghetti lines are on here, these different colored lines. We're gonna remove those in a second. But if this is the TTM squeeze chart right here, and you'll notice that the green on the zero line and then turns to red, okay? If you come up here to the top, that's when the Bollinger Bands have crossed into, that's the red and what is this, purple or blue? I'm colorblind. Um, that is a fact. Um, so when the Bollinger Bands travels within the Keltner channel, which is these other three lines, then you can see that the TTM squeeze turns red. And then once you get here, when it turns green, well, you can see that the Bollinger Band has broken back out of the Keltner channel. Now, if your platform does not have the TTM squeeze and you are interested in using this indicator, uh, that's one way to cheat. You can just put a Bollinger Band and a Keltner channel on your chart and uh, act accordingly. You know, when one goes and when the Bollinger Band goes inside the Keltner channel, you're in the squeeze. When it comes back out, that's when you're supposed to take your trade. Now, so we don't get dizzy, I'm going to remove those. 
So let's get rid of the Bollinger Band. Let's get rid of the Keltner Channel. Let's apply that back on. Say OK. And let's make our chart a little more compact. Let's see what we can do about that. The one thing about Thinkorswim is it is a cumbersome chart. Let me tell you what. Especially with this nonsense that I'm dealing with right now. Okay. So let's go back to, this is today actually, this is Wednesday. And uh, the TTM squeeze by John was, uh, he uses it for options and stocks for the most part from what I understand. So that's mostly going to be on a daily chart. Now we're futures traders here. So I've got this on the E-mini S&P or the ES. And we uh, don't trade obviously on daytime charts. We trade uh, intraday, so we're trading. This is a one-minute chart. Now, I had a five-minute up earlier. You say, hey, you know, why are we trading on a one-minute chart? That's ridiculous. Um, there's not enough examples to show you on a five-minute chart. They're few and far between, and honestly, it works about the same as terms of accuracy. And so we'll get into that here in a minute. So let's start back here at, uh, let's say, 845-ish. So you can see on the zero line, everything is green, right? And then uh, once you get here to about this 913 central time, it turns red. <clears throat> so this is when you are in the squeeze. And as it's going along, once it hits this green dot here, that's when you would take your first short. Now it immediately backs up on you, goes back into a squeeze red dot, goes right back into green and then that's an okay trade and you get uh, some points out of that. Does it again, goes back green, immediately backs up on you, uh, but then goes down. As you can see the histogram down here, these little dots or these lines are below the chart so they're indicating going short. Uh, if you wanna come down to the TTM wave, uh, it's basically, it's close to the same thing. The TTM wave is telling you you're in a downtrend. So for confirmation, that's where um, you would definitely be going short. And then on the ADX, with this line coming down, that means you're in low volatility with the potential to expand back up into higher volatility. And so that's where John recommends getting in. Um, so you can try to catch the movement into that expansion, you know. Uh, volatility because that might signal a chance for a greater move okay so if we move forward a little bit um, a little bit on the chart to about 10 30 we enter another squeeze the squeeze lasts for quite some time you hit the green bar uh, the, these are down so you would go short uh, the ADX at that point in time is back into low volatility territory, so that works out in your favor. Uh, the TTM wave is actually still signaling that you are in an uptrend. So if you want all three of these to match up, you would have skipped that trade. Now for simplicity's sake and to make a little bit more room on the chart, I don't think the TTM wave adds that much value uh, to this strategy. It's the least important piece. And um, for the most part, you can see if a chart's trending in one direction or another, plus you've already got uh, the momentum built in to, to the TTM squeeze to begin with. And so simply for um, simplicity's sake, and to make this chart a little bit cleaner, we are now gonna remove that too, but I wanted you to see that to begin with because that is in the strategy by the man himself. So we're gonna get rid of that now. I don't wanna remove all studies, I just wanna remove one study. Let's see here, edit studies. TTM wave. You are now gone. All right, so that made things a little bit more clear on our chart, as you can see. Gives us a little bit more uh, space to work with. That's why I did that. Okay, and just to cover things again, remember the light blue on here are signaling that you're supposed to be increasing in momentum. The dark blue 
uh, is signaling that you might be decreasing in momentum. So when that dark blue starts piling in, that's kind of your warning sign that maybe your trend is done and you should not be jumping in at this point. Okay. I mean, it really is that simple. Uh, it's pretty darn easy to understand. We're going to go back to a previous day. We're going to go back to Tuesday. We're going to see how this one looks. So we're going to start a little bit earlier. We'll start at seven in the morning. Uh, you're moving along, moving along and not much activity. You do get one red dot here. The ADX is in low uh, territory. So that's good. You signal green. There's not, um, there's, there's little tiny bars to the downside. And this is where you're going to have to be careful. Of course, no indicator is perfect. Most of them are actually terribly flawed, to be honest. Um, so, you know, you always combine these things with additional price action, points of support and resistance, whatever your uh, standard strategies may be right? The indicator is supposed to just kind of be tools to uh, help you confirm these things, uh, to help you spot these territories perhaps, but they really, most indicators should not be used on their own or you will be a sad person. But as you can see uh, from like six o'clock on, we basically uh, have pretty good support in this area. Okay, and we also have pretty good resistance up here. So that begs the question, uh, at this point in time, do you skip this trade because you've only got one dot of the squeeze or do you go for it? You know, if you had gone short, uh, you definitely would have lost very quickly. But if you had gone long, the theory held that the ADX line was in low volatility, expanded back to big volatility, and that's why you got this move up, okay? So let's move to the next one. Again, you're in this period, obviously, of contraction. So the um, it does actually a decent job of picking up uh, this squeeze area. And this one, you get one red dot again, and then it signals, I suppose that's to go long. It's very, very weak here. You know, one dot with these little tiny bars. And if you went long there, nothing would have happened. You basically would have got chopped out probably at some point in time. The bigger squeeze happens here. You got the ADX dropping in volatility. So that's what you want to see. And it turns green and then red and then green with really no sign of anything going on here. Uh, then it's downward momentum. So you might have caught a scalp in that situation maybe. Okay, maybe. And then again, you get these one or two dots. So you really would have to, uh, you'd really have to think hard if you're gonna play this indicator with um, those tiny squeeze areas where it's just one or two dots. If we move forward on this, again, as soon as you take this short here, if you take that dot and then take these bigger lines, it uh, bounces back immediately, not too far though, and then you do get the move down after that. So perhaps you would have been all right there. Uh, then you miss all this action here until about 1045 when you get the same problem again about the one dot. And then that's not the greatest either. You might have scalped out again, possibly. Okay. This one, um, I would have said this one would have been a better area because you're getting this area of resistance at this point in time, but it fires off long, which would have been a terrible decision. And then by the time it fires off short, you're basically at the bottom of this move and you lose once again. So problem with indicators. Now, uh, the one thing they recommend, and this is the bugaboo about pretty much every indicator, is they only work in one environment or another, meaning they're either designed to work in a trending market or they're designed to work in a range-bound market. The TTM squeeze, you may have guessed, is for a momentum market, a trending market. So if this is in a strong trend up, or a strong trend down, it actually uh, usually works pretty well. 
But guess what works very well in that situation? Pretty much every single indicator, pretty much firing in the dark works well, right? And the hard part is recognizing when you're in a strong trend and then getting in before it suddenly is over, right? That's the hard part about trading. So uh, I'm not, you know, I'm open and honest that I'm, I'm not that big on um, this indicator or any indicator, nothing personal against this one. I just think they're all severely lacking and that uh, different trading strategies are better. So you've seen kind of how this works in a one minute. Uh, let's move over to a five minute just to get a little bit different perspective. Uh, this is the same day that we started with. Uh, this, this is Wednesday here. And let's see if we can, can we expand this to look a little bit better? Let's do it like this. Okay, this is what we wanted to see. So we've got Wednesday and this happens way early. This happens at 440 in the morning central time. Uh, it throws this squeeze on. And then here doesn't, you know, there's no bars either way. So I don't know if you're going to call that firing or not. If you went short, you would have caught the top. But this doesn't tell you really if you're going short or long and the ADX is actually up. So if you're using the ADX for confirmation at that point in time, you probably would have skipped that trade. And then this is what I was saying about the five minute chart. Like uh, you don't get, and, and it's not a bad thing, honestly, you don't get very many opportunities. Um, it doesn't fire very often and waiting is usually a pretty good thing in trading. So definitely not complaining about that. Uh, we go through this big long area of no squeezes and then this squeeze comes in a little late. Uh, by the time this one is done, you're at the very top, it fires for you to go long, it immediately reverses. And I could take you through multiple days of this, but I already did that before making this video. And I can tell you, um, I don't see much value in this indicator. I really don't. Uh, maybe you have a different experience. Maybe it's because I'm doing this on intraday on futures instead of, uh, you know, a, a day long, week long charts uh, for options and stocks. Uh, maybe it works better in that scenario. I just don't know what value this really adds. You can see when a market is contracting, uh, when it's gone flat, you can see that with your eyes and, uh, and then you can play price action accordingly from there. I don't know what this adds to it, but again, I can say that about pretty much 95% of indicators on the market, but it is important to know what's out there. It's important to know how these things work. And, um, and it's also important to know that what does work for me or what does not work for me uh, may not have anything to do with what does or does not work for you. Okay. So don't take my word for it. I always recommend going out and playing with these things and seeing how, um, how they work in your particular strategy and your day trading world. So that's it, boys and girls. If you have any questions about this indicator, uh, please let me know. If you didn't understand something, please let me know in the comments below. Take it easy.